Hello everybody and welcome once again to Feed the Beast Ocean Block. Today we are going to build the industrial turbine, which is a reasonably large structure. So let's get started. So here we've got, a, I basically do going to build a 5x5 five five structure out here. This is 5x5 five five and the height, I can't remember, I think it's about 9. I should have written it down, shouldn't I? So as always, uh, all the mechanisms structures start with uh, a frame so i'm going to build up the frame here so like this let's go to flight mode and let's put it up I, th I think we'll just put it up and then we'll extend it as we need it so i know it's taller than the, than the reactor oops okay that'll do let's break this one off so the first thing that we need to do is put down in the middle here a rotor so we've got four turbine rotors it's important these numbers actually because we need to put some stuff on top of this so we can put oops try again that's three let's get rid of this one pick it up again <laughs> that's classic isn't it <laughs> never mind we'll fix that in a second of course those are going to go straight into the bag so let's get that out of the bag i break two casings i maybe only broke one i'm not sure like that sometimes it's just a bit difficult to put down so we should have are those casings yes those are the casings we should have 20 casings left okay fine right and then on these turbine rotors we put blades and it's two blades per rotor and we've got four rotors so we need eight blades you can simply just hold down shift and go like that makes it a bit faster and on top of this, we need to put a rotational complex. So that's this thing here. I'm not going to go through the recipes. They're all in JEI. And then I think this is possibly the most expensive bit. I'm not sure. Okay, so the rotational complex here. And then around the rotational complex, we need to put eight pressure dispersers. Uh, because we're building a 5x5, five five, the internal dimensions are three. So that's why you need three blocks across. So basically like if it was bigger, you would need more pressure dispersers, just a layer. Okay, very neat and tidy as it happens. And then on top of these, we then need to put two electromagnetic coils. And the, each electro electromagnetic coil will work for two rotors. That's why we've got two. So we can put them down like that. doesn't really matter too much. And then one thing that's very important is these saturating condensers. This is what turns the water or steam back to water again. And you can't basically have an... Uh, you need at least a row of these in order to do that. You might need more. I'm not 100% sure. We're assuming for the time being we need a row. So let's, let's just build this up a bit more here now. Uh, probably in the way. So that comes across here like this. This is actually the height. On top of this, we're going to put vents, um, turbine vents. Put that down like this. So this should be should fill out nicely. I've got the eight pieces left. Uh, exactly, spot on. So that's the frame. And now that that's basically it. So what we need to do now is put down vents. We've got thirty three vents. Uh, it does tell you in the um, GUI how many vents and things you can, if you're short of any, to put down more. I'll have a look at that in a second. Let's put these down here. So we've got two layers of vents. Uh, vents are also where you can actually um, take water out of here. Because the steam comes in and the water goes out. And it's very important to do this because otherwise you, you run out of water which then causes the um, reactor to overheat as we saw last time in fact i upgraded my reactor this is now a seven by seven by f that's a look by six high so in here we now need to take this is where the fissile fuel is coming in so here we need to put this is where i've decided to put steam coming out now i can change this let's do this because it's probably a bad place being gentle here let's just put it in the middle so we can put steam coming out of here 
uh, and into here. So we've got, at the moment, we haven't got any glass in here. We'll fill this in with glass afterwards. So of course, these have gone now back into my backpack. Uh, I can't see them. I need reactor glass and I need the port. Got five. Right. Anyway, I've got, because I've knocked down the other reactor, we've got four extra. So the port goes in here. And then we then take the glass and we put it back into here like this. That's why I've got an excess of structural glass, reactor glass, good. So like that. It fills up again with water that we've put into it. The water's coming in from um, nowhere at the moment. We'll do that in a minute. So here we've got an output port. We need to configure this to being an output port. So you shift right click with the configurator. That says it to an output waste. One more time, we'll set it to output coolant. So in other words, what come out of here is steam. So that steam comes into this reactor. We'll need two valves for the reactor. One to put steam in and one to take energy out. So that's that. So steam, of course, is um, ultimate pressure cables. No, our ultimate pressure tubes are good. So we can simply put these across here like this. And this isn't formed, so it's not connecting in. That's the reason for that. And then here, I've also got the same problem. I should move this across a bit. Let's just do that. Let's move it across to the top here. I think I wanted to maybe, no, let's put it here. <laughs> Seems to have broken rather a lot, do not I? That's okay. So we need to get the reactor glass back again. So what I was deciding to do is to put it in the corner as near as I possibly could. So directly opposite this one. So that, and then the reason for that is because the water is over here and I wanted to bring it as close as possible to there. So, right, turbines. So we need to take a turbine vent as the output, which I'm not sure I'm going to put this, to be honest with you. Probably on the other side to start with. To put out, to get some power out of it. Let's put it here. Um, I might replace this machine later on for thermal coolant. We'll see what we want to do. So here I've got to get out of my bag again. What we put in so we put in one of these vents and reactor glass which i don't care about at the moment we should we should be all right reactor glass let's put that up, put that away and we put the vent in here like this so this is going to this as you can see is an input port it's the green one by default it's an input port so what we want to do is now is input water so water is here in fact my water was here so i've got to Bring water all the way across here, which is um, not great, but because I need quite a bit, few mechanical pipes for doing that. Well, we'll, do, we'll just do that. Uh, I don't think I need any more water because I think this is all filled up. This is not quite filled up with water, but I need what it is actually filled up, but it's just a rounding error. So I need to bring the pipes across there. I'll tell you what, I'll do that and come back in a second. So I've connected the pipe from here, going all the way through, along underneath the ground, coming out here, as you can see, and then going up into this input. So the reactor should actually be full of, um, it is now full of water for the size of the reactor. So we need, now need to take water out of here. So we can take water out of here. Let's get the pipe back in my inventory, ultimate mechanical pipe. So that's not forming because it's not clicking into the hips. It's not formed yet, so it's fairly tidy. It's, if I look at it like this, put a pipe on, shift click it on here, you'll see that the water will be coming out of here and going into here. The pumps are not adequate to power enough water into here without extracting it from the stream. Um, steam, sorry. So that's last thing. Let's just put some structural gr glass around this. I think that's all we need to do now. Let's get the, I've got a wand with me, so let's just use the wand at the same time. It does speed up this process quite a bit, because at the moment you can only connect glass onto here, so let's just do that. Oops, wrong one, I've got, <laughs> typical. I've got those in my offhand. I don't want to be in my offhand, let's just break those up. Uh, being careful. Right, good. Try again. Okay, good. So that's now connected on this face. Let's do the same thing here. If I no, I have to do it. I put down one layer first of all, and then it's fairly straightforward after that. Of course, the bottom one is also 
a bit problematic. We could probably do the bottom ones first to see what happens. So that's that face done. Let's do the bottom one. Start from the bottom here this time. One more. We can do that from the top. And then the very last face here is slightly more complicated because we've got other bits and pieces in it, but not very much. So now it's formed, as you can see. And that should then have allowed these two to connect in together. So that one's now connected, where the steam's going. And out of here is the water, and that's also connected, as you can see. Go back a bit further, you probably see it better. So now we need to run it. Let's just, what I was doing before, I was taking power out. Let's get this up, my hand don't need this anymore. Put it in the backpack, back in the, put, put it back in the backpack, then I know where it is. So what we can do is take power. And what I was putting in, so I was putting the power into this power pot for to grow uranium. So let's just do that. Um, I'm going to take this and break these away. Because it shouldn't be connecting into there. So what I'll do is I'll break this one away here like that. And, the, and the, of course the valve. And just put the two back in again. That should be structural glass good. The valve will be in here. Let's put this away. I don't need those in there. Put those back. So let's just put those down. So if we come out of here with the valve, we can then simply run cable going down to this. I'll probably use before I have advanced cable. I've only got nine ultimate cables, so it won't be enough. Let's put it down anyway. Maybe I'll make some more. But I think for the time being, I'll just use. If it doesn't have enough power, we'll just use advanced ones. Uh, it's, it's basically got to be able to transfer enough power into here. And this will take 350,000 per tick. Anyway, let's just, rather than make some on camera, I'm going to just put these universal advanced ones down here like this. They do connect together, as you can see. Of course, then the throughput is the lowest of, the, the lowest of these. So let's just put this one down here. And we can come along here and put it, that should link them together. So no power at the moment, you can see it's clear in the middle. So now we just turn this on. And I have set this up to being at a burn rate of 23 from a maximum burn rate of 39. Let's just activate it. But I can activate this now with buttons. You see, I've got two buttons on these two. Uh, this is the RS latch. So I click that right one, that, that enables it. As you can hear, very loud this machine, you can't turn it off. So this is heating up here uh, to a temperature of 610K, which is fine. That's not going to do any damage, as you can see. And then the heating rate is 460 millibuckets per tick. And the burn rate is 23. So what if you come along here now and you press shift on this, you'll see that it doesn't tell you much. Just right click it. So the maximum flow rate here is 1024. And we're inputting into this um, 460 millibuckets per tick. So it's basically 460 millibuckets per tick. Okay, from a maximum of 1024. The capacity of this is 640 millibuckets, but we're not getting up here. This is stable, and this is producing 525,000 Fe. Presumably, that's per tick as well. And now this is, as you can see, is now lit up. And this is coming into here. Oops, don't need that on my hand, do I? There's actually something's noisy. I'm not sure what's noisy. <laughs> Maybe it's one of these machines. Let's just break this away. Try not to break anything with it. So this is now producing uranium. The uranium's coming into here. And it should fill up fairly quickly, as you can see. I probably should replace these power parts for a Mark 1 or 2. This is definitely full which means it's got more than enough in to run the uh, reactor. Underneath here, what I have got is a um, logical sorter. And in the logical sorter, I've got seeds coming out and um, the essence, mystical essence coming out here. And then they are getting pushed across into here. So any extra seeds coming through here and get um, cooked using power, 
and the output into there comes into here. So you can see that I've basically got all of these seeds that are being produced and I'm actually getting in fertilizer essence and the fertilizer essence is coming directly into the chest or this from below. So all I did was to color these two differently. This one here has, doesn't have any, maybe it does have a color on it. That's power, isn't it? Oh yes, it's here. This one is colored blue. So if I take the wrench here, just press shift on it. No, I don't want to I right click it. It should tell me that the color is blue. If I right click this one, it tells me the color is none. So only blue items can come in here. And underneath this, I've actually set it up as breakable. We can see for ourselves. This one here is set for green. Yeah. You press shift to change it. I wasn't pressing shift, so I didn't I didn't change it. It's right clicking just tells you what it is. Um, and that's basically it. So of course, very loud as you can, I'll keep out of its way. Over here, ah yes, look at these machines which don't have any um in here we're making plutonium pellets, and they're coming in fairly quickly. Uh, and this solar activator has got no upgrades in. I don't think it makes much noise. Here I'm getting some isotropic nuclear waste that's been converted into um, plutonium pellets because I did connect these two together between episodes. Anyway, get out of the way. <laughs> so that's it for this episode. I do hope you've enjoyed it. Next time, we shall be looking at the output that's coming out of the reactor, nuclear waste, and processing that. So until next time, I wish you all the best. Bye for now.